Hello everyone, my name is Ihiki, I'm the creator of engines.database.com and this is Gaming Engines News Roundup where I'll talk a little bit about the last news on um, the gaming engine space. So how this is going to work out is that I got the news tab here on engines.database.com and all those links here that you see, uh, they may have come from the official gaming engines website, social media or GitHub release. And we'll talk a little bit about the most interesting stuff here. And that's it, there's some, a lot of Cool stuff being made, so let's check it out. So first, let's talk a little bit about Godot again. So Godot is approaching 4.2 stable release, and now it's just launched the sixth version of the beta. And so here we are. This sixth beta fixes a number of showstopper regressions via some relatively core changes. Those will need through testing to ensure that we are not introducing other issues that will prevent users from moving from Godot 4.1 to 4.2. Please pay specific attention to those changes and ensure that they do not cause issues in your projects. Then it lists, it lists here a bunch of possible issues that you have to pay attention. If you are using a better version, if you're changing your Godot better version, you should probably read this to be really careful, you know, because this is better. It may still have some regressions. So yeah, uh, please do back up your project if you're using a better version. And, but yeah, that's it. That's a better version, a new beta version. So it, it, it's mostly bug fixing. If you want to check out the new features of 4.2, there is this link here, 4.2 beta one, that lists all the new features of Godot 4.2. So yeah, very excited. Uh, it's really, there's some really cool changes here and hopefully we'll see a release candidate soon for the 4.2 release. Unity published three articles this week on their website. The first one here is the most interesting one. Our first ever ebook for level designers is here. To be honest, I don't even know if there are many level design books out there. So it's really cool to see like some content about this, uh, specifically about level design, right? And yeah, they made a, a very, you know, it's it was actually quite extensive ebook. I downloaded it. I don't know if I can show you because, you know, you have to register or maybe you have like to do download from their website. But here in this article, they give you, you know, just a, a kind of a summary of the whole article of the whole, sorry, of the whole ebook. And the ebook is basically divided in three parts, right? The first part is about level design in general, is about like general concepts, about prototyping, you know, level design, about blocking stuff, you know, how, how is the approach of researching, you know, in level design. Uh, the second part is more of an introduction to Unity for level designers. So if you don't know Unity, you know, you never, you know, uh, played around with Unity, you have like some very core concepts explained there for level designers. And the third part is a more in through description, you know, is a more in depth description of the main tools they basically want to advertise for, which is the Pro Builder and the uh, here, the Pro Builder and the Terrain Editor, right? And so there are a lot of really cool stuff there. And the, the first part of the ebook is, I think it's, you know, there are some really cool general concepts there that you can apply pretty much everywhere in every like levels that you make, even if you're not using Unity. So it's pretty cool, you know, it's free ebook, so <laughs> you should totally download it. It's it's really nice. And but yeah, that's basically it. That's the that's the first article. It's the most interesting one of this week. Here is the second Unity article. Unity Fundamentals seeks resources to help you master the basics. So the problem with this article is that the title is kind of misleading because it it makes you think that it, it's talking about like general stuff, but actually, you know, 80% of the article is about AR and VR experiences. So they are making a, a, a very, you know, uh, marketing push uh, about all the AR and VR tools that Unity has because, you know, uh, Meta Quest 3 just launched and it was, a, 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 at least it looks like it's quite a successful uh, VR headset, right? So people are talking about it. People are creating new VR experiences. So they are trying to make this marketing push. But yeah, this kind of this article here is mostly like listing some resources that you can use to, you know, learn a little bit about AR and VR in Unity. There are some courses. They are foundation. There are some tutorials here. The last part here is the one that is, you know, it, it can kind of applies. Uh, everywhere that is resources to enhance your game development. So create with code and introduction to visual scripting. Those 
uh, links here are just like Unity courses that you can, I think you can register for free and just like, uh, there are some videos here and you can take those videos, there are some resources, and basically you can learn some stuff with Unity, right? If you never uh, played around with Unity again. So yeah, that's it. Uh, it, it. Again, it's kind of a misleading title because it's not like, it's mostly about AR and VR. It's not like a uh, general concepts to apply everywhere, but yeah, I mean, at least it, it lists here some, some cool resources to learn stuff from Unity. And the last Unity article here is the How to Cultivate Trust and Safety, a primer for online communities. So it's basically a continuation of, you know, last week uh, they launched the, here the 2023 Toxicity in Multiplayer Games Report. And it's a really cool report, actually. It's more, a, a has some uh, really cool data to look at about toxicity in games, what players expect game studios to do about this. And it's really cool to read this report. Uh, the article here is kind of a, it's okay-ish, I guess. It's really short and it's just like, here are the three main uh, things if you're like trying to, you know, solve this, uh, uh, toxicity problem, right? So first you have to understand the problem space, you have basically have to study, you have to get the data, you know, to, to know how you can tackle toxicity. Uh, collaborate with stakeholders, so inside your company and probably with players, like uh, uh, the stakeholders here, uh, it's kind of a, you know, a word that I, I don't think it defines it if it's talking about like if the stakeholder are the players, you know, you're collaborating with the players to solve toxicity or just inside the company, probably like here is just inside the company, but anyway. And prioritization, prioritization, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce, prioritization and execution. And okay, it's just, yeah, they're very, it's very generic as an article. I think the most, if you want to read this article, it's more useful to read the games report, the toxicity multiplayer games report. This is a really cool report. You should read it. If you're working in a live operation game, in any kind of game that has live ops, this kind of stuff here, it's it's a very good material to read. But this article, I think it's kind of, yeah, it's, it's okay. So, Phaser just launched Phaser 3.17. If you don't know Phaser, Phaser is a HTML5 game framework. It's really cool, it's really big. There are a lot of web games using Phaser. You can also publish mobile games using Phaser too. It's it's amazing, it's a, it's a really cool uh, framework. It's really complete, there are a lot of stuff there and it's still in development. So there are a lot of you know new features here. Uh, I think the main one here is this Round Pixel. So Round Pixel is a, is a funny name. I actually looked around to see like if there's a you know general concept about Round Pixels, but I, I think it's just here is just about uh, making pixel perfect stuff. So here the game config Round Pixels property is now true by default. This means that all game objects will be posi positioned and rendered with pixel perfect precision, which is by far the most common use case for phaser games. And then there's a bunch of stuff here. It's, so it will prevent sub-pixelation, rendering and at not integer offsets, etc., etc. And this is really cool. I think there are most most game engines that have 2D capabilities, or they are you know mainly for 2D games. They have some very you know uh, there are a lot of game developers that want to create pixel perfect games. You know things like Celeste. You know Celeste, you, you must have pixel perfect rendering so the player knows exactly where they are because you know there are pixel perfect jumps and etc so every game that has like 2d uh 2d capabilities have this kind of niche this kind of you know uh necessity so this is really cool you know the fact that it's now like basically allowed by default you know and it's gpu rendered and yeah, that, I think that's the, the most interesting stuff this week. There are some other new features here, texture packer and some arcade physics, uh, new stuff here on the arcade, phys arcade physics of Phaser. You know, arcade physics is more like, a, it's not, it's a physics that, that is less in intensive than, you know, more realistic kind of physics. But yeah, it's really cool. There are a lot of stuff here. You can see like the whole list here. If you want to check out Phaser, I do recommend checking the this YouTube video here, Phaser April 2023 Games Showcase that, you know, it shows a little bit about some of the 2D games. You know, Vampire Survivor <laughs> was initially made in Phaser. Now I think it, they, they ported it to, to Unity. But, you know, it was basically a Phaser game with a lot of stuff. And this, this is insane. This is really nice. 
And there are a lot of other games here, so you can check, you know, the kind of stuff that is made with Phaser. And, you know, there are even some 3D capabilities in Phaser too, so yeah, that's it. Default just published uh, this small short tutorial, Mastering Render Targets. So the best way to understand this tutorial here is to jump at the end to check what the author intended to do. And this is a really cool example. So here you can see this waterfall and there is this uh, really cool looking water shader, you know, and the, the character uh, passing behind the waterfall, you can see like this kind of uh, uh, watery effect on on the, the sprite of the character. And also there are the clouds here. So you can see like there's some texture in the cloud, you know, there's some like kind of wavy texture in the cloud. So how do you do something like this, right? In other engines like Unity, like Godot, there are a lot of tutorials about this, about using shaders, about using viewports and etc. But how would you do this on default? And this tutorial here, explain it how how to create this kind of effect it also like gives some some cool insight in how to change this effect to other you know to create other kinds of effects so we have this pixelation effect here we can also apply shaders you know in, with different uh black and white shaders we can also use some manipulation there we can also have this kind of magnifying effect here on the viewport there's some really cool stuff that you can do there's also like for example this kind of mini map ish uh, uh kind of texture here so yeah it's a it's a really cool really short tutorial and other you know other engines like default they they are not as popular as the as godot as unity as unreal so they need this kind of tutorial to you know for users to check how to how to create this kind of stuff more easily so yeah that's a that's a nice tutorial so really short news here, but it's an excuse to talk a little bit about Wonderland engine. So they just launched 1.1.3, which is a minor version. It's not, uh, there are no new features here. It's just like this, a small uh, footnote here. This, this release makes streaming binary files even more powerful and brings lots of bug fixes and UX improvements. So it's just this, there are no like new features. But Wonderland engine is, you know, it's, it's a really nice engine. It's uh, built highly optimized web-based XR apps that run on any device. So XR is the acronym for for mixed reality, you know, so it's basically augmented reality and virtual reality. And we're seeing a lot of stuff like this, you know, nowadays, you know, maybe it's getting back on the hype, you know, not metaverse, but, you know, just virtual reality because of Apple, because of MetaQuest 3, which is, you know, again, it's being at least quite successful device. So yeah, we are checking like some uh, gaming engines that are uh, VR and AR ready, right? And Wonderland, it's a really cool engine. You can see here on the showcase, they are, have some, some really cool demos you can check. And so if you're interested in, in XR, in augmented or virtual reality, you should totally check Wonderland engine, right? So more short news. Uh, Narat just launched 3.7.0, so it includes lots of new formatting options for HUD stats. It also has lots of technical changes behind the scenes to config, to make hot reloading of config files work better in more places. So the thing about Narat is for, you know, it's a game engine for narrative driven games, but it's a little bit different than Twine because it has some features specifically for games that have uh, light RPG elements. So for example, you've got some resources, you got some quests, you have an inventory, and it's more or less ready on Narat, right? You, you can use Narat features to create this kind of stuff. And it's, you know, way more uh, e easier than to create this by yourself using JavaScript in, for example, trying. And it, it, it's a really nice, it's a really cool game engine. And this here, uh, the, the fact that now you can have some of this formatting for HUD stats, it's really important for, you know, to customization because basically you're using Narat features to create this kind of, you know, light RPG elements with some resources, you got energy here, you got money. So now you can customize this better, right? So yeah, it's a really cool game engine. If you're interested in checking out Narat, you should check here the demos. No, sorry, here, narat.games. And there are a lot of really cool stuff here you can check to get more or less like the feel of the games that are made with Narat. So last news for this week, uh, Verge 3D just launched 4.5. So Verge 3D, for those who don't know, uh, it's uh, here, in a nutshell, create immersive 3D web content in three easy steps. So you compose the scene, add interactivity and deploy your experience. So the main thing uh, that is different for, you know, Verge 3D than other software 
and other you know game engines is that first it is uh you can use it as a blender add-on so it's similar to armory 3d you know both are game engines that you can use in blender you basically add them as a add-on as a kind of a blender plugin and you can use the game engine the second thing is that it has this kind of you know scratch like visual programming so if you're familiar familiar with scratch you got like this kind of puzzle pieces that you can use to create your game in-game logic right so yeah it's it, it's interesting it's to create mostly to create web content web stuff so here you can also check some games that are made with this there are no like major games made with virtual 3d it's very you know unfamiliar game engine for most people but yeah you can check here for example the farmer journey here and you can see more or less like how you know you can there's a you know it's a small example of a runner in virtual 3d but it works and it gives you this kind of glimpse of what you can do with using virtual 3d right so yeah it just launched 4.5 and you got here some some cool looking features you got some new application settings so this is mostly like to change uh your you know some application looks and to customize your application for web so you here you can change like preloader image and style full screen button annotations etc etc you got you can now customize the style of the html uh, components that is going to you know export when you're exporting a, a HTML page from this engine. Uh, here you can also you know there's a this is a really cool feature for creating block uh, geometry of a level to blocking the geometry of a level. It's the procedural geometry. So Godot has has this feature. It's uh, the CSG mesh, right? So you can basically just add some you know meshes and it kind of adds and subtracts to create you know a, a complete mesh of all the operations that are using so here you can for example subtract a sphere from this mesh here or and and you can see how it's going to look right and yeah th those are some really cool features if you're interested in using verse 3d you can check here on the documentation for windows it has a, a installer so you can use it as a standalone but if you're using linux or mac you have to install it as a blender add-on so here you can check here how you can install it via uh, this add-on interface right you go to preferences and then you add here the verse 3d so it's really similar to armory 3d you can use it in blender and this is it's a really cool you know uh workflow for people that are more familiar with you know modeling in in 3d and in blender everything is going to be on the same package you know both the model modeling software and the game engine so yeah that's it so that's it for this week's video thank you for watching and if you got any feedback please comment down below i would love to hear and i'd love to read every feedback and if you like shorter or longer videos and that's it i see you next week bye bye